The eminent domain was a battleship under the service of the Cascadian Coast Guard during the Cascadian Conflict. It served as the flagship of Cascadia and participated in several battles, search and rescue missions, covert operations and coastal shelling missions. Design-wise, this ship is based heavily on the Zumwalt's hull with quad turrets inspired by the French slapped onto it. Going by what the game describes the ship has, the eminent domain comes equipped with a large amount of anti-ship missiles, 5 quad turrets, an electronic warfare suite and a speed equal to that of the average destroyer. Since it's also a state-of-the-art battleship, it also has armor while still maintaining high speeds. Exact specifications of the ship are still unclear and whatever data I give you should be taken with a grain of salt. From what I believe based on the AutoCAD drawing of the ship I made myself personally, the ship is a member of the Degenus class with a displacement of 70,000 tons. Length is approximately 228 meters, beam of approximately 35.8 meters and a draft of at least 10.5 meters. Due to lack of stacks, the ship is likely nuclear powered and could output a speed of at least 40 knots which is a destroyer like speed. Though in game, ships feel like they move much faster than that. As for armament, my guess is that the ship's main guns are placed in 5 quad turrets with each gun being 305mm wide and a barrel length of 50 calibers. The ship also has secondary guns which few people noticed. There are two dual turrets behind the C and X turrets with horrendous firing angles. These guns are likely dual purpose from the high gun angles they possess. It is likely the guns are 127mm guns with a 50 caliber length. As for missiles, the ship comes equipped with 32 modules with 7 cells each for a total of 224 missiles. The purpose of the missiles are for anti-shipping but can also be used for anti-air. Anti-air weaponry aside from the secondary guns and missiles includes the sea whiz but they are only mentioned and not rendered on the ship properly for me to draw out. Supposedly, the rear of the ship serves as a helicopter deck and it comes with a hangar and fuel depot. This isn't confirmed as there is no evidence that helicopters landed on the eminent domain. As for crew complement there should be at least 250 crew though it's likely higher due to the size of the ship, but I made an assumption based on high automation in the future. There is no evidence of torpedo protection, nor have there ever been torpedoes in the game except for a mention of it in one line during mission 19. This means no torpedo beat montage for you. Though in game, the ship can take damage based on the loss of a turret for every hit. If all the turrets are gone, the cruise missiles in mission 7 will be guaranteed to sink it in one hit. If you want more details of the ship, including the interior, I have a link to the PDF file for you to look over. Now onto the lore behind the ship. In 432 after Calamity, the Pacific Federation completed the construction of a new battleship named FNS Jerusalem. It was sent on a shakedown cruise off the burning coast of Cascadia on the 7th of March. Not realizing that the Federation was at war with Cascadia still, the Cascadian Coast Guard sent a task force of cruisers led by the great Captain Chad Woodward to capture it in a surprising turn of events. With the ship now in Cascadian hands, Woodward immediately renamed the Jerusalem to the eminent domain and fought off Federation reinforcements as they made their way back to base. It is said that they sank 15 Federation ships before Hitman team arrived to save the day. By the time all Federation ships sank and planes were shot down, the Federation HQ decided to sink the ship for good with cruise missiles. The backup plan failed as Hitman team shot down all the missiles and Cascadia now had a powerful naval asset in their hands. From then on, the ship did naval bombardments on unsuspecting Federation emplacements and conducted naval blockades. The eminent domain was also present during the battle over the Bering Strait where it conducted search and rescue of damned pilots and assisted in helping Ronin team in their mission at the Harkima Industrial Park in the Scarred Sea. During the Frontline 59 campaign, the eminent domain was present during the landing of Cascadian troops on the shores of Magadan. Under the orders of General Faust, Captain Woodward bombarded the helpless reserve forces stationed in Magadan and forced them to retreat inland. The eminent domain returned back to Cascadia to perform her duties before not even a month later, had to return to oversee the evacuation of Cascadian marines as the invasion of Magadan became a failure. 
During the evacuation, General Faust abandoned her post. This frustrated Captain Woodward so much that he had to take control of the operation. In an act of desperation, he contacted the Federation himself and pleaded to them for a ceasefire and an evacuation of all Cascadians from Margadan. This was a fatal mistake as since he did not surrender the troops, the Federation denied his request and destroyed all Cascadian forces on the beaches. Peacekeeper squadrons were sent to sink the eminent domain and the ship was forced to retreat. Luckily, the eminent domain managed to retreat, albeit with casualties. After some time licking their wounds and recovering from the second calamity, the eminent domain was ready for another naval engagement during the closing days of the war. This time it was a confrontation with the Federation's first battle group somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. The Federation fleet was led by her sister ship, the Degenus. This battle forced Captain Woodward to have his fleet cross the T which is an advantage in real life naval warfare but for some reason it puts him at a disadvantage in game. I guess they're using World of Warships logic where showing your side is instant death. Anyways, with the combined help of mercenary air power, the Degenus and the rest of first battle group was destroyed and the eminent domain was able to enforce the blockade against the Federation forces of Presidia. The Battle of Presidia was the final battle of the war which the eminent domain participated in. During the battle, she was responsible for sinking the remaining ships in port which were trying to escape. They were victorious and a ceasefire ended the war, but not before a rogue Crimson One attacked everyone with his burst missiles and cordium bombs. The eminent domain was overwhelmed and promptly sunk in the port of Presidia but fortunately, Woodward managed to escape the sinking ship. That was a very long lore guide of the eminent domain. As for gameplay, I do not see any mods that let you play as the ship. There are mods that change the missions on how they look and make the eminent domain look like a spaceship. As for normal skins that retexture the battleships, there are none online. Unless you downloaded a skin mod for the eminent domain from somebody I asked on discord. You are welcome to share more skin mods for the ship with me. There's not much more details I can give out but I will say, the logo you see here was designed by me and is now an official sticker for the Project Wingman Discord. In fact, I am also selling this design in my personal store as a sticker or t-shirt. Feel free to buy it if you want to have yourself some personal eminent domain merchandise. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next how to video.